Welcome to MIG, Hands-on Intro to Engineering Design, a course taught at the University of South Florida. This tutorial discusses object-oriented programming with the Arduino. In the last tutorial about functions, we learned that a basic Arduino sketch consists of data and of functions that act on the data. So in a typical program space, we define variables. Here in this example, uh, we see three variables a, b, and c defined as integers. And then we define a function down here that is called my function. And it acts on a, b, and c. And it returns a, a floating point number in this example. We saw that functions can be used to give an Arduino sketch a better readable structure by putting many uh, low-level commands into functions and then simply call the functions from the main loop. So while we saw that functions are a great way to organize uh, lower-level commands into structures that can be read easily and, and that, clean, that yield a, a clean uh, Arduino code, uh, as the uh, Arduino code gets more uh, complicated, it is uh, good to go one step further and to group the uh, uh, functions and the data into um, units that are called objects. Before we talk more about object-oriented uh, programming, we need to learn a few new words. So in C++, when we discuss objects, um, we now refer to functions and data as members of an object and um, the data itself is called properties and the functions are called methods. So we have members of the object and then we have properties and methods. But keep in mind this is nothing else but data and functions. However now because we have this additional structure of the object we can have private data and private functions, private properties, private methods and then we can have public methods and public properties. The good thing about uh, distinguishing between private and uh, public members is that we can now basically ha uh, hide um, uh, properties from the outside program code inside the object and it is not accessible by the uh, uh, program code directly. This, this is a very good uh, method to avoid uh, programming bugs where uh, properties A, B, and C could be accidentally changed uh, from some other part inside the uh, program code. Usually the best way to access the uh, private data inside an object is through public methods. Public methods are functions that can be used in the program code on the outside and with which we can access the, uh, the properties inside the object. It is also possible to have public properties of an object. Um, so these would be variables that would be visible from the outside of the object. <coughs> However, um, it is not recommended to use public properties if not absolutely necessary. The danger with public properties is, is that they are not hidden anymore and so um, they can be accidentally changed um, through the program code. So the, the added benefit of private variables, private data inside the object is lost when we use public properties. Now let's see how we can make objects. Objects are defined through classes. Now a class that can be simply looked at as a blueprint from which we can make objects. So here we need to learn a new word again. In C++ we call this making process where we use the class and then we make objects we call that instantiation. So here instantiation. And through this instantiation process we can just use one class definition and then we can make several objects um, from that. Now we will see later that a class consists of a header and the C++ code that executes the class. Now this header contains declarations 
which are definitions of all the properties and methods that are defined within the class. The code section, on the other hand, contains the actual programming code that implements the methods and defines the uh, memory space that is being used for the properties. So far, all this was pretty theoretical. Now let's see what these objects may mean for uh, Arduino project. When you build something with the Arduino, you usually hook up devices to the Arduino. So maybe here in this example, uh, we may have an LCD display, we have LEDs, we have a servo motor. If you program the Arduino for a system like this with multiple components, it is generally a good idea to uh, make an object for each of the connected components. So here we see a, a schematic Arduino sketch and in this sketch we would have um, we would have objects for the LEDs uh, with methods to turn the LEDs on and off. We would write uh, code for an object for the LED for the LCD display. Uh, methods could be write some text, delete text, position the cursor on the display. Uh, then we would write an object um, for the servo. Right, so probably the one of the most important methods here would be move the servo to a um, predefined position. And then whatever else we connect, uh, we would write further objects. And um, that would then allow it to write some very clean code because all we would have to do to make these objects uh, do certain things is to use the methods for each of these objects. Okay, let's put this concept to the test. Here I prepared a uh, simple Arduino sketch with which we will now operate two LEDs. We will turn them off and on alternatingly and we will do that by using objects. In the beginning I put a little description. It's always a good idea to start your sketches that way. So the first commands that we have is the header for the class that uh, allows us to control the um, digital pins of the Arduino. So I call it digital pin, class digital pin. And between the wavy brackets now we have the header for this class. So at the beginning we have the uh, public access specifier. So these items here, these members, are visible from the outside of the object. So the first one is the constructor, digital pin, and then the pin number. That will allow us to instantiate objects for, dif for different digital pins. Then following we have the um, member method. So the first one is begin. That will allow us to initialize the pin as output. The next one is on and the third one is off. So these two functions will allow us to turn the pins off and on. Uh, all three of these functions return nothing, so they are defined void. Now the fourth um, uh, method is called status. This one will allow us to ask the object about its status, whether it's on or off. That returns a value, right? the answer to our questions. It's a boolean, so this can return 0 or 1. Now at the end we have the private members. Um, the private members are in, in most uh, uh, objects just uh, uh, variables that are only visible to the from the inside of the object. So the first one is the pin number, right, an integer. And then we have that boolean variable that is the status. It's always a good idea to mark the uh, private members that one can distinguish them from the um, from the uh, member from from variables on the on the outside of the object, and so it's it's customary to put that underscore uh, un uh, before the um, member names. Okay, now after we defined the class, we have to define the members. So this is basically the C plus plus part of the class. 
where we actually write code to define the functions and you see here that they all start with the name of the of the class so in our case digital pin and then we have two colons and then we have the actual member uh, name so the first one is of course the constructor um, and that is called the, the, the same digital pin so we have digital pin digital pin and then the pin number and all we do here um, C++ wise is to assign that pin number to the internal uh, private pin uh, uh, variable okay now on to the uh, uh, methods here the first one is the begin method so we write again digital pin and then begin so that says begin is part of the digital pin class and here now the only thing we do is we define the pin mode of that particular output pin and we set it to output because we want to drive the LEDs okay so the next uh, method is the method that allows us to turn that pin on so what we do here is um, digital write pin number high and we also set that status a uh, boolean so that will allow us to query the object um, um, with the uh, with the status method down here what is your status are you on or are you off so in the function for turning the pin off we have the same but we set the pin low and we define the status variable to zero finally we have that method that allows us to ask for the status so digital pin status and that returns as a boolean the status variable so we just write here return status and uh, if we would call this method then we would get the um, status of that pin okay and that concludes the uh, definition of the class so down here we have finally the main Arduino sketch so the first thing we need to do is we need to instantiate um, two objects uh, one per pin that we're using for addressing the LEDs so all we do here is to um, define an object called LED1 on pin 10 and an object called LED2 on pin 11 that's where we hook up the two LEDs okay after these constructors um, we now go into the setup uh, function of the Arduino sketch and here all we say is LED1 begin so remember that will um, set the pin to output and then we set LED2 begin and that will set that pin to output let's go on to the main loop in the main loop all we need to do now to turn the LEDs on and off is call the uh, methods for turning them on and off so we say LED1 on and then we wait for half a second then we say LED1 off we wait for half a second then we say LED2 on wait for another half second and then we say LED2 off and wait for half a second now this is a very simple sketch but you see immediately how very clean the code is we don't have to remember anymore on which pins the LEDs are connected uh, the command here s tells us immediately that we are turning on LED1 and here we turn it off and so on so there is no more ambiguity and the code becomes very uh, clean and easy uh, to read okay let's see what happens okay this is the circuit so all I did is I added another LED here on pin 11 and it's connected like the other LED um, we have the resistor on the uh, negative end of the LED and connected to ground here and here in real two objects at work so we just saw that the use of objects is a really elegant way to deal with hardware that is connected to the Arduino now wouldn't it be nice if we could move this class definition into a separate tab and there and with this clean up the um, 
the main tab of the Arduino sketch. Well, let's see what happens. Let's try to make a new tab here. And we call it classes. So here we have it. So let's copy, or rather move, uh, this class over. So copy and here it is. A little bit strange with the Arduino IDE when it comes to editing that everything is so close to the border. But anyway, here we go. Now we have the class in the tab. And if our experience with the uh, functions uh, from the last tutorial uh, is worth anything, then um, this should compile and upload. So let's see what happens. Oh, digital pin does not name a type. So that means that the compiler is unhappy and that it basically does not understand what digital pin means. This tells us that somehow moving the class into the um, uh, separate tab here did confuse the compiler. That means um, we have to change something here. So let's copy the header back above the um, the Arduino main sketch. So here's it back in. So now we have in the tab, let's cut this out. In the tab we still have the member definitions, so they are removed, but we have here the uh, class header before the compiler hits the uh, main Arduino sketch. So let's see if this works. Aha! Happiness! So it compiled and it uploaded. So we just learned something about compilers, or in particular the Arduino IDE, how it is set up. So the class definition here, the header as we called it, that is basically can be viewed as a pre-declaration. And what happens here is the compiler learns basically what members or what functions we have here. and also about the uh, constructor, of course, and so this allows it to um, uh, read through here and uh, do its compiling. Um, this here then is interpreted after, right, when the compiler links the C code um, into the final program, and so this seems to work. So the question really is why did this work with functions? Why were we able to put functions into a separate tab but not classes? Well, that has to do with the fact that the Arduino IDE does a pre-compiling run where it looks for functions and then does or inserts before it compiles uh, such pre-declarations before the main Arduino sketch. But we do not see this. This happens behind the scenes. Now with classes, apparently, this is not happening. So what this means, if we want to remove classes, class definitions from the main Arduino sketch, we have to do something different. We have to use libraries, and that is the topic of the next tutorial. This concludes our tutorial, Object-Oriented Arduino Programming. Thanks for watching.